Hey, don't worry man, life is beautiful. We have heard of this crap and we have given this crap to many. But what we fail to understand is that if a depressed person understood this, he would not be depressed. There is a way to talk to a sad person and that is that you hear him more and speak less. It was Sushant Singh Rajput's death anniversary a few days ago. Instagram was flooded with it. I remember Jia Khan a couple of years ago also thought of not continuing with her life. As did Pratyusha Banerjee, the famous Balika Vadu. She was also somewhere around 24-25. And then I heard of the same fate of a 16-year-old beautiful TikTok star Sia Kakkar. And now this amazing actor of the Family Man series, Mr. Asif Basra. I have a list of 15 such people that had something really heavy in their hearts that nothing could ease. Although, when school-going kids start taking the decisions of life and death, my two sisters-in-law get very tensed about their daughters who are in that fragile age. My few friends have resorted to weed, joints, alcohol and various similar things to ease their pressure. They say, oh, what a high, so relaxed. Well, they are sadly still struggling. A few days ago, a student of mine opened up about her problem of diasthemia. In easy words, it's, it's a long-standing sadness, a prelude to depression. And that's my inspiration for this video. I remembered my discussion with uh, my other friends and associates who suffered from postpartum depression, normal depression and various kinds of other sadness. Her problem was also not different. It also was some kind of failure. And most of these failures actually are of few types only. Failure in career, failure in love, guilt, threat, etc. I have an amazing friend. He is gay. His parents still don't know. He can't tell them because apparently for others, he's a failure in society. So he ran away, settled himself in another country. So the issue is failure, right? What I fail to understand that how can failure cause the smile and happiness go so down that it takes away the zeal of living? And is there something, some joint, some good stuff that can ensure a long standing high that can ease your pressure that can make everything light and can make you love yourself again? Well, yes, there is. Welcome to Unlearn with Ashish. Now that you have reached here, I'm sure that you either are interested in me or in this topic. My apologies for this shameless promotion, but why don't you pause the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Unlearn with Ashish. So, by the way, I was talking about that amazing drug that can help you ease your pain, that can help you relax. Don't get ideas. I'm not talking about love, I'm talking about serotonin. Serotonin. It's a chemical in brain. The more it will be, the better will be your mood and the depression will reduce. But where to get it from? Hey, I got the meaning, hey, I got the drug, hey, serotonin, serotonin. It's not available in market, yeah. It's formed in your body, in your brain and in your gut. In fact, 90% is in your gut. You may wonder that if it is there in our body, it is produced here, then why people are depressed? Fair question, so let's understand why. When instructions that originate in brain travel from one place to another, they take help of nerve cells called neurons. But to make these connections, you require this chemical called serotonin. How does that happen? When instructions are ready to travel, the brain releases serotonin that makes the connection between the two neurons. That's it. When the instructions have traveled, the serotonin gets absorbed back. It's like this, that the longer the serotonin is there, the longer your mood will be great. People who are sad, suffering from diasthemia or depression, they secrete less serotonin or it get, uh, gets absorbed pretty quickly. Yeah. So that's simple. We got it. That's the whole magic. Do something that increases the serotonin in your body, in your brain, and you will be all right. And there are two ways to do that. One by medicine, which has a lot of disadvantages, of course. And the other is without medicine, and it has only the advantages. Of course, I'm going to open the suspense later, so that's why that is on the second way. So let's first of all understand about the medicine-based serotonin. Because in our country, people sit at extreme ends. Either they won't visit a doctor for a long, long time, 
or they will be so quick at gulping down a pill. Hey, headache. Come on. Anyhow, when you normally visit a psychiatrist, she prescribes you antidepressant medicines. They contain certain chemicals that do not allow serotonin that is produced by brain to get absorbed back. This way, serotonin gets on increasing and you start to feel better. But these medicines take some weeks to show effect and by then the side effects overtake. You should note that there is no confirmed study that tells how these medicines actually work. In fact, these are effective on some of the people and absolutely ineffective on many. You should also know that our body requires something that helps it to form serotonin. That thing is called tryptophan. Try to understand it and then we will link it with antidepressants. So where do we get tryptophan from? Milk. It contains tryptophan in plenty. In fact, the US Food Department recommends 250 to 450 milligram of tryptophan daily. This much you can get in less than two glasses of milk. But we won't drink milk happily. We like medicines, isn't it? Tryptophan is also found in nuts, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, cheese, soya, peanuts, oats, sesame, also in plenty. Acha, by the way, tryptophan not only helps in making serotonin, but also helps you get good sleep and it helps in making vitamin B complex. The problem is that people try to consume synthetic tryptophan through tablets, which increases the serotonin too much. And when serotonin increases too much, you start getting fever, muscle stiffness, fits, nausea and diarrhea. So resort to only natural tryptophan. Here I must tell you the side effect of antidepressants also. Within a few days, you start feeling low, you start feeling anxious, you feel reduction in the libido drive, constipation, diarrhea, headache, nausea, low blood sugar, difficulty in taking decisions, delusion. Now think of it. Your antidepressants are giving you all those problems to resolve which you were taking them in the first place. The catch-22 situation. People who are highly depressed are advised by doctors sometimes to take antidepressants and synthetic tryptophan together. A combination which is very dangerous. In fact, many times psychiatrists do not even prescribe that. People just read it on the internet and they do it. Many of you might have visited mental health experts. Some of you might have become happy and healthy and some of you probably haven't. I'm not asserting that doctors are wrong. Absolutely they are not. But there are limitations to medicines and they also know it. That is the reason why they insist that you take the right food, sleep on time, avoid alcohol, do exercise, keep yourself busy in creative things, talk to people, go out for shopping or sports, etc. Because medicines only do not work. If that had been the case, the world probably would not be having 500 million people suffering from depression. This time, depression, according to WHO, is the leading cause of disability in the world. So do something that increases serotonin in you. First, you eat everything that I asked you to. And secondly, do that thing which has shaken the world of medicine and therapy as the strongest and probably only potent technique to remedy depression. That's called meditation. It is sad that our country is pioneer in it, but few people are learning meditation and practicing it. The result is more suicides, more sadness. Pressure is going to mount. Stress is going to mount. So you have to do meditation. So how does meditation help in correcting depression? It does what Saturday night party doesn't. Remember when you were waiting for Saturday night party to ease your mind from bosses cribbing, uh, breakup, lack of money, guilt, sad life, etc. And then we look at alcohol, malala cream, marijuana or any other drug and we feel that if we take these, our mind will start to feel lighter. Do you know why? Because you start losing your awareness when you consume these things. Your mind doesn't become lighter. You only do not feel the heaviness. No thoughts, no feelings, nothing to resist. That is the high I'm talking about. There is no problem in it probably, but the problem is that it is not permanent. When intoxication goes down, the awareness comes back, thoughts return and we are back in that pool of sadness for the same reasons that apparently vanished last night. We don't like this feeling, do we? So what do we do? 
we wait for the next Saturday night party. And that's addiction. Pause the video for a moment and think when you first took a beer pint to, in to ease your mind and since then, how frequently have you been taking? If the answer comes out to be that you are more frequent now, you have taken a step towards addiction. We wanted to improve our mood, isn't it? We wanted to increase serotonin, but that didn't happen. Alcohol doesn't give you serotonin. In fact, psychiatrists prohibit people from taking alcohol with antidepressants because that is almost lethal. Focus on the most important part. Meditation helps produce serotonin in copious amounts. So it provides you a high without the loss of awareness. In the last 10 to 15 years, significant research on meditation as a remedy to depression has yielded remarkable results. If you have ever been in a company of a regular avid meditator, you might have realized that these people are generally less angry. They focus better on work and they worry less about it. They believe in action. You might have felt that sitting with these people gives a sense of positivity. Why exactly that happens? Because there is a lot of serotonin, so their mood is always jovial. These people on average feel less tired after a long day work. They sleep well. It's not that they don't feel sadness or something, but meditation changes one very important thing in their mind, in their psyche. And what's that? It lets them recall the knowledge when they need it the most. So when these people are sad, they don't think of committing suicide. Their mind tells them that you need to focus on your work and you just meditate regularly. Keep the serotonin levels high and let it be. It will change in time. In fact, meditators are generally less concerned about what people think of them. They are not easily embarrassed. There is a shloka of Medha Suktam that talks about the benefits of meditation. Sharir me vicharshanam, jivva me madhumattama, karna bhyam bhuri vishruvam, brahmana kosho si medhaya pehita, shrutam me gopaya. Meditation makes your body strong. It makes you speak softly and sweetly. Your ears become alert receptors of knowledge. It reduces delusion. It improves decision making. It helps bring out the complex knowledge that is hidden within us and improves concentration and general intelligence so much 20 minutes a day is enough to produce the required serotonin to get rid of depression if you do it more there's no harm so your mood will be better it will be easy to surpass a breakup depression won't happen guilt won't eat you it will improve your relationships with others and if by rarest of the rare chance the thought of suicide enters your mind you will never be able to act on it you will always move forward with smile. I'm sharing a few links in description to help you learn meditation. I'll also share a link to a beautiful book written by Swami Poorn Chaitanya, erstwhile known as Alexander, who came to India from Netherlands and became a yogi through the Art of Living Foundation. Many times people think that I cannot sit in one place and focus on something so I cannot meditate. But my dear, meditation is not about focusing on something. It is leading you to focus. I dedicate this video to my friends who are suffering from diasthemia, postpartum depression or any other kind of depression or sadness. So now get up. All you have to do is to get your serotonin up and running through meditation. So like the video, share the video, comment on it and meditate. And I'll meet you again pretty soon. Namaskar.